In this video, I wanna talk about a unique kind of future perspective that I've seen a few authors using to bring some emotional punch to moments from their stories. This technique seems so matter of fact on the surface that it's surprising just how effective it can be at making a reader feel something. It's a technique I think could be added to the arsenal of any writer. I'm gonna give you some examples and then talk about why I think it works. So let's get started. So what is this technique? What do I mean by unique future perspective? It's hard to describe, but essentially there are lines in some of these stories that zoom ahead through time and through the lives of the characters. This gives the stories more context, and I think with it, more emotional weight. And I can't quite put my finger on how, but to me it makes the stories feel more universal, and it makes them become more all-encompassing representations of human life. I can't really explain it, so I'll give you an example. This is from The Pier Falls by Mark Haddon, which I talked about in a recent video that I'll link up there and at the end of this video, but it's a fantastic collection of short stories. It's not really a spoiler given the title of the story, but after the tragic collapse of a pier, a boy who's just lost his parents in the accident is pulled out of the water by an onlooker, and Mark Haddon says this. Her name is Renee. They will stay in touch with one another for the next 30 years. That zoom forward packs so much punch, I think. It's so matter of fact, but in that simple stating of a fact, Haddon suggests so much about those characters. They're now tied together for the next 30 years because of what's happened. The courses of both of their lives have been unavoidably altered. For me, it highlights how people need each other to understand things and to process tragedy. And it also sheds light on the kindness of strangers in the face of terrible things happening. All from a really matter of fact couple of sentences. It seems to expand the lives of these characters beyond the bounds of the story. It convinces us that they're real people and this is just one moment of a life of many. I personally love stories like that that make me forget that they're stories at all. I've got some more examples and in every one I think it's just as effective, so I'll show you the examples and talk a bit more about how this technique works. In another story from the same collection called The Gun, which follows around two boys who've discovered a gun and intend to use it, Mark Cadden adds context to one of those boys' lives by zooming ahead decades into his future. There will be three extraordinary events in his life. It then goes on to list these events, the last one being On the morning of his 50th birthday, his mother will call and say that she needs to see him. Talking to his father the following day, he will realise that he received the phone call half an hour after the stroke which killed her. The striking thing about that, aside from the spookiness of the actual events, is how your imagined image of the character changes so smoothly along with the time in his life. The difference between the boy that we spend the majority of the story with and then the much older man that we flash forward to for a second gives this impression of a life that's filled with choices and decisions and events and repercussions and I think that makes it really interesting to read. It makes you wonder how the events of this story, this childhood adventure with a gun, will shape him and set him on a path towards that future event. It feels like a great way to increase characterization and also to escape that stagnant feeling that your story is just one narrative event after the other with no real change or progression throughout. By chance, I came across another short story this week that demonstrates the same technique. It's called Ghosts, Cowboys from the collection Battleborn by Claire Vey Watkins. In this one, again, it's that same flash forward to reveal a detail or some element of characterization that otherwise wouldn't find a place within the story. It's a detail that I think adds colour and history and style to the writing that makes it feel so much less linear. To me it's the difference between making your story feel like an endless straight line highway or a curving mountain pass. Here's the line. 1961. My father, still a boy, would start a wildfire in the hills above the PHA stables. He would be 11, crouched in the dry brush, sneaking a cigarette. Moments like this are all about the origins of character and what matters to them, and to a larger extent to people in general. It feels to me like these flash forwards are pins that hold the canvas of the story tight enough to be written on. And the way they do this, and why they're so good at doing this, I think, is all about contrast. Each of these flash forward passages comes directly after a past tense portion of their stories, and that alone makes them feel notable and different. If we imagine the story as a timeline of past, present and future, it's normal to see stories that go between these two, past and present. It's normal to see flashbacks, love them or hate them, I personally love them. It's even more normal still, I'd say, to just alternate between the two. But what this technique does, if we were to plot it out like that, is different. Their heartbeats in the story, their past tense pulsing far into the future before settling back down again. They're small electric shocks that 
cannot fail to make a reader take notice. So if we decide we want to use these in our own writing, how do we do it? My opinion is that we should use them in moderation. These passages or swings in tense and perspective really stand out on the page. They're impactful enough that I think less is definitely more. An overabundance of these I think will get old really quickly for a reader. I'd say one for a short story and maybe two or three for a novel is enough to grab a reader really effectively before the technique starts to lose its effect and wear out its welcome. When to use them I think is a more interesting question. There's nothing stopping you whatsoever from using these in the middle of your story or at the end of your story but I think the beginning of your story is an especially effective place to try it. The reason I say that is because of that attention grab. If you're able to add something so impactful into your story early on, it lets the reader know that you're in control of your story and that you know what you're doing with it. Once you've laid the table for your story, you've established character point of view and perspective and tense and to some extent established what is normal for your story, then I think is a great time to throw one of these curveballs at your reader. And I've got a great example of an author doing exactly that. I've discussed this exact passage in a previous video somewhere, but I can't help it. I'm going to repeat myself. This is an example of a gut punching flash forward from Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, who's one of my favorite writers. This comes at the end of just the second chapter. Minus spoiler alerts, but nothing that'll affect your enjoyment of the story in any way. Of all of them there at the bar that night, the bartender was the one who survived the longest. He died three weeks later on the road out of the city. It's a shock, it's a disruption just as you're starting to make a judgement on what the rest of this story is going to be and what you can expect from it. And the impact of this example I think comes from just how briefly she uses this technique. I'm calling this technique a flash forward and to me that's exactly what it should be, just a flash. It shouldn't go on for pages and pages. I think the impact of this technique is in its speed. If we stayed in that future time and perspective following these lines then that's just a change in the presentation of the story. And for a lot of stories that does work, there's definitely a time and a place for it, but it, it's a different thing. But I'd say in this case, make it a momentary passage that arrives out of nowhere. And just like an unexpected message can change the course of your day, an unexpected passage like this can change your entire view of a story. And from a writer's perspective, if they're brief, these jumps don't take a whole lot of planning and detail, and that makes them really manageable. Since you don't have to stay in that future place for too long, then there's no requirement to add a load of context or detail to it. You can just deploy those impactful sentences and just let them do their job. You can use it to hit with impact without having to dull all of that impact with a load of explanation to make everything make sense. That makes it an excellent place to use some of those side ideas that you might have. Some of those out of scope moments from your story that don't really fit but you still think would add value to it. So when I started to realise just how effective this technique really is, I set myself a challenge to try and use it in a story. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm writing a longer piece at the moment which is made up of connected microfictions. Yep, I've got no idea what it is either. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. But still, I wanted to try and use this technique in a story. And I did. The only problem is, the story that I wrote is going to end up being the final story in that project and as a result is going to have massive spoilers so I can't share that one. The only option then was to write another totally different story, so I did. Here's the story, it's called They're Biting, look out for that flash forward technique and this story turned out a little bit sad. The sheriff's trying to spend less time each day thinking about death. His own, other people's, more his own. How's your thinking treating you? His father asks. His slow hands are just the peak of his cap against the sun coming off the water. They talk often on trips like this, days that aren't really about catching fish at all. Could get out to the pond Saturday, Herb says they're biting. Well, I'm trying to avoid thinking really. In 30 years, as the sheriff slips away, he'll tell a stranger about fishing with his father. She'll hold his hand. Best way. Hopefully I managed to make good use of the technique here, but like any other writer, I'm still learning. And the more you experiment, I think, with stuff like this, the more comfortable you end up getting. So if you're looking to try and put this kind of flash forward thing into your own writing, I'd maybe try and remember these three things. Use it sparingly. Its impact, I think, is in its brevity. Use it early. Let your readers know that you're in control of your story and that you've got style. And keep it brief. One sentence, I think, is enough to hit the reader and leave them thinking. If this was useful, leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, as always, and happy writing.